Hello, and welcome back to The City Beneath. Uh, we will be continuing forward, uh, but I was told in the comments that I might want to do this. See how well you do without my good advice? <sighs> so I do plan on getting all the achievements, uh, and I don't really care about spoilers as far as um, how to get weird achievement things that I might be missing. I will be getting um, all the challenges complete at some point in the playthrough, but uh, telling me about things that'll prevent me from having to reload and restore is fine, just makes my life easier. Don't really care, as long as you're not spoiling like puzzle solutions or something. And I've already played through this hold, so I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, in general, my spoiler policy is pretty lax. You know, if I'm playing a story-driven JRPG, don't tell me what's going to happen, but aside from that, it's like, I don't really care all that much. Anyway, uh, the fork. Beethro trotted briskly forward. I've hardly broken a sweat. I probably didn't even need that guide. Oh, okay. So uh, hit the checkpoint and go on, I guess. The Octoridge and the Grand Library. Now, the library is where we were told to go. And if we go to the library, then we'll be told to go to the Octoridge, I think. So for the sake of sequence breaking and seeing how this is going to play out, because I'm pretty sure I've never seen it, done this order of things, Let's see what happens if we do Unkridge first. After all, we don't have a guide telling us to go to the library, so... We'll just, uh, wander and do stuff. As Beethro entered the Unkridge, he wondered to himself, what is an Unkridge anyway? Is that where the Empire performs Unction? Nah, I don't even know what Unction is. What if it's where they keep their uncles? Maybe I'm gonna have to fight 46th uncle or something. That'd be weird, but I'm sure I'll beat him. Unless, of course, he can spawn nieces and nephews every once in a while. That might be trickier. Jeepus. I'm glad I have my sword with me. I like my sword. It makes me feel safe. Maybe I should stop for lunch. Okay, and off the Ormites, we have a sword. Architectural manipulation tokens may not be used without proper security clearance. AC section 14B, subsection 3I. Well, who cares about that? Alright, so arrow rotator tokens, I guess it's going to tell us. Rotate all the arrows in the room, one needs rotation when touched. Touching one again rotates arrows back. Yeah, you can see the arrows, the token switched when I used it. That lets us get across the force arrows. This is probably my single least uh, liked element that was added in the city beneath. Not that it's inter inherently bad, but it adds a level of complexity to force arrows, which until now were just a thing where if a room contained force arrows, you just knew what they did. But now the existence of arrow rotators makes force arrows a less certain thing. No longer is a force arrow a guarantee that you can't go a certain way. So I don't really like that. Uh, it's not too bad because it's pretty obvious if you have the architectural token here. It became an even bigger issue in the second sky when they added disabled force arrows, because now you have to check for orbs and pressure plates toggling arrows on and off. I really don't like that. I can understand its usefulness from a puzzle perspective, but from a player perspective, it's just a headache I, I wish I didn't have to deal with. All right. This is probably a challenge. Only use one arrow rotator token and don't turn your sword after striking the orb. Okay, well, we've used one. Yeah, I figured that's how that would play out, but if I turn this way... Almost. Interesting. Hmm. I figure this is probably going to be a uh, turn order thing. Uh, I guess I could do that. Doesn't help. Um, it's also possible uh, that we can do it from this angle, maybe.
Yeah, I'm not sure about this. Alternatively, um, thing I think I'm gonna have more success with. These are the same. Oh, these are the same arrow. Okay. I mean, this seemed the most promising, didn't it? But the problem... Okay, well, we only let one of you out. But we have to do another one to get across the arrow. them all out. Almost. So with the different turn order, I might be able to make that work. Because there's no way I can... I mean, I could do that. The problem is I have to go that far. Ah, oh, that worked. Okay. Too many. Okay, well, we'll do it this way then. This is still no good. Or we can just do literally the same thing again. Okay. Okay, now we should have more than enough room. Turn the lock and turn once only. Yep, so that required some weird force error tactics. This is going to be another challenge. Yep, drop all trapdoors when clearing the room and finish on the eastern side. Okay. Well, if we look at this, we're going to get two clockwise turns, and because these are on trapdoors, we can only use them once. Which means that we need this roach out before we turn this arrow. Is there anyone else like that? We have to turn both to get you out. We have to have one turn to get you out. One turn to get you out. One or two to get you out. Two to get you out. Okay, well, I think this is just a matter of probably doing a bunch of this. So we have to do that. There's not really any point in going any further right now, so we're not going to. Let you out. Okay, might as well. Kill those. So you can get out, but you can't get out if I toggle the next one. Okay, well, that's pointless then. Ah, okay. So even though we couldn't get you out, what we actually wanted to do was get you on that arrow, 
probably. In fact, let's just do that with all of them. Um, and not cut off your path. Hmm. Okay, we'll think a little bit harder about things. See, now we can't cross. Um... Yeah, we can't do that. Interesting. So yeah, we can't hit this before we start. Alright, well let's just go along the top then, because I'm having trouble trying to cross here. Cure ourselves a little bit of extra movement. Do something like that. That should be fine. Okay, and we want to end over here. So when we hit one of these, you will both get out. You will get out. We get the other one. I think we're just fine now. I think that was it. We have to hit this one to get you out. Uh, we don't have to drop all the trapdoors unless that was a challenge thing. Drop all trapdoors. Okay. Bridge Bethro can no longer cross until you leave the room and uh, enter it again. Alright, so yeah, I've played the hold before, but these new challenges are making me think a little bit. This room, however, does not have challenges, which means I can kind of just run in and do stuff, right? Without having to think too much. Uh, so this one is about each time you go into a room, you get to change the way the arrows work. So this is obviously inaccessible. But after one rotation, it'll be in and out as possible. This is in and out currently possible, so you might want to do this first. This one, if we go in, we get stuck. Assuming we hit this. We don't have to actually hit the uh, rotation token, though. Okay, I have a... I think I have a plan here. Let's just not hit the rotation tokens. We have to do one to get into that last area. And we can still get out. Okay, this means I do have to hit all four rotations. Okay, so I missed something. These arrows here, I have to rotate all four in order to be able to get out. Alright, well, in that case, I think that's still fine. Probably doing this one last, then. One, two, three should be accessible. The uh, bottom right is a little bit worrying. I haven't really processed that one. Yeah, this is incompatible, because here I can't get out after hitting it. Here, 
I can't get out after hitting it. Okay. So, we'll do the same thing, but do this one first. This one I can't hit for a while. This one is still good. This one will st still be good. No, it won't. Okay, we'll do this one next. Okay, and that should work. And we have out. We have out access. Okay, so we get to choose which way we have these arrows rotated. We're trying to get the queen out without getting her stuck. Well, our first move is pretty obvious. Have to do something like this. Queen is now stuck. If I do this, she goes onto the arrows. So we probably just want to line that up. Without thinking about it too hard, I'm going to wait one more. Ah, uh, she will slide. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I can do that. Send her down here. I haven't really thought about this. I'm just kind of doing stuff, trial and error. So if I do that, you get stuck. That's not good. But if I wait until you get to the corner and then do it... Yeah, you get that, and then now you get through. And now I think it's a matter of... Something like that. Yeah. Getting her stuck on one of those and sending her out. <laughs> kind of a weird room, but an interesting twist on the monster maze. Speaking of monster mazes, we need to get a roach out of this. Uh, stepping on any of these pressure plates traps the roach. So, obviously, we have to do two of these in order to get the roach out, and then I guess we're probably... Hmm. So two's an option, three's an option. I don't think we can get to four because... Roach will get out. Again, haven't really made a plan here. I'm just kind of moving the roach around. Okay, roach is safe, relatively. So now what happens if I do this? Bad things. Hmm. All right, and there we go. Tutorial will teach about bombs and fuses. Okay. Despite all these tutorial squares, I would not recommend this as your first draw to hold. Uh, bombs and fuses. Step on the fuse to light it. It will burn further each turn. Didn't they have pop-up messages before, and now they have scrolls? Uh, maybe I'm misremembering. When spark reaches the bomb, it will explode. Explosions will kill you and any monsters in range. Obstacles block bomb explosions. Fuses will not burn against the direction of a force arrow. Click on bombs to highlight the area of effect. And now that we are in the 5.0 engine, bombs that chain to other bombs will actually... Well, maybe that was always a thing. Uh, but yeah, bombs chaining to other bombs and bombs being blocked by obstacles will now show up properly. That's nice. Bombs also detonate when struck with your sword. They sure do. 
Oh, what a hard room. And Force Arrow demonstrates the fuse does not burn against the Force Arrow. Backswiping. An important tactical maneuver is backswiping. It can get you out of many tight spots. Explicit backswiping tutorial. At this point, there's not enough time to turn my sword to run away. You are correct, but I can attack. Watch this. Now you try. So there's a room in Journey to Rooted Hold that I think everybody kind of just gets stuck on, where it's the first time in that hold where you are required to do a backswipe in order to solve a room. And I remember I got there and I was sure that the room was impossible and I was missing something. And yeah, I was missing something. I was missing the backswipe. It was pretty good. Pretty good move. Okay, well, that was... Um, so we had Bomb and Fuse, and then also Backswiping Tutorial. Sure. Alright, so we'll light a Fuse, and then we will... I guess just let the Fuse go here. I seem to... Let's see, it will get to here currently. It doesn't matter, I can never get through that. Wait, if I can never get through that... Do I not want to go left? I can never get through here. Ah, I can get through here. Okay. Ah, uh, can't get through here. Can't get through here. If I do them both, I can get through here. So maybe that's what we'll try to do. Yeah. All right, and that should get to the end. <laughs> and I was not super fast because I came from the tutorial warp. Yeah. Secret walls are really hard to see in this room style, which is kind of funny because it's like the entire tile is being marked up. It's not just a tiny one little crack, like the entire wall has a pattern on it. But I guess just because it's the gray on gray, it just, it's hard for the eyes to pick this one up. At least that's my experience. Yeah, I did not forget about this room. The harder, the harder one of these. This is a room I remember. And it comes with a challenge. Guide the roach around the ring between the large pressure plates. Interesting. So what does that mean? As far as challenge scripting, the roach must come out this way. So maybe it doesn't matter, but I have to go, I'm assuming, either fully clockwise or fully counterclockwise around this part, which, because of this wall, means going on the force arrows. Alright, well... Let's start with some bad choices by just repeating the same thing we did last time. Also, this is a little bit bothersome because it's not going to show up on the map. Like, on the map, it's going to show up as there being a passage this way, because I don't think these ops these light posts do. Yeah, they just show up as floor. You can see them. So, uh, it's going to look like there's a way north, but there is not. Alright, so with that, I can now get you here. And from here, I can do this. Which, unless I really needed this to be toggled in this state, uh, that's pretty much required. So now, what happens if we go on this side? Hmm. Oh, you can just go through there. Well... I mean, I can go down. That's not good. I think I'm stuck. 
you know, I can do that, but... Problem is we're gonna go around, so let's just start over. Uh, we're still gonna start with this one. Because there was a different... Uh, I'm not thinking ahead too much on this, I don't like parsing lots of arrows at once, so I'm just gonna kind of do trial and error based on setups. So we went right last time, we're gonna go left this time, and that is instantly a fail. Doing that doesn't make a difference. Okay, so I think that using these three corners is a fail state. So we'll start with this one. And if we do the same sort of thing here... Actually, yeah, we'll go down further. Can do that. This isn't going to make any difference though, it's going to be the same here. So the only difference effectively is if we do this. It forces us to do that. But now if we go down this way... This is different, is it? Not meaningfully. No, that's different. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I did not predict that. This is... Maybe I'd like this uh, element more if it wasn't just trial and error, but the way I do it, it's trial and error. Okay, I can't do that. Can trap you there. Doesn't do me a lot of good because. Yeah, you can go down. Okay, you're still facing the wrong way. Uh, I think this is actually al almost a solve. It's almost a solve. It's here, we can get you through here. Actually, doesn't this just work? Okay. All around the watchtower. Yeah, I think I'd enjoy this element more if I wasn't just doing trial and error for things like this. But it's also, I guess, depends on the um, the way the room is set up. Because this is essentially just a monster maze, and I generally don't look ahead too far on those anyway. So that's, that's fine. Then a bunch of stuff. There's a blue door here. Can't get down it yet. Which means that we have to take this path. Oh, well, things are getting dark. And also there's a challenge. Use all three arrow rotator tokens. Okay. Well. Can't deal with you. Can't deal with you. I'm just looking if there are any of these that are deal with a bullet at the moment. There is one. So let's just deal with you. One down. So now it's a matter of order. Well. Just look at the end state. Obviously this is impossible. Because we can't get you out. Now for everybody else, this end state is fine. So you are the only problem, Roach. Alright. That means we just do this first. And get you out. And room should be solvable in this state. 
Because we can step off the force arrow there. Let's twist again. Sure. Yeah, being very familiar with diagonal movement off force arrows and stuff like that is definitely helping a lot here. Oh, and that's it for the upgrade. Hey, eh? who's there? Just an old friend. Oh, you? Yeah, it's been a while. So we're friends now? Mostly, I remember you hissing at me a lot and trying to act scary. Always we were friends, Pifo. Like a child loves his toys. I sought only to deepen your ability to a fear. Is a child there friends with his toys? Large things to fear. Hmm. A brave man has only conquered smaller worries. All right. I need to be afraid of stuff you tell me that doesn't make any sense. Uh, that pretty much, yeah. Help me. It's an excruciation that each truth I wish to give must be demonstrated concretely. Can you not expand outside your immediate senses? It just takes imagination. You are going to a place of knowledge, the library. Maybe, maybe not. <sighs> There, the mothingness's flaw shall be demonstrated. What's this stupid mothingness thing you go on about anyhow? Yeah, that's what I thought, old friend. You never miss a chance to not help me. All right. And that was a required room, so the blue door would not have gone down if I didn't do it. But blue door is down. Uh, I believe room lighting like this, and also these lampposts, are new to uh, City Beneath. So just another way to make more of an impact. I don't know why I bothered turning my sword. Uh, to make more of an impact uh, on your level design. The Deep Unctridge. Beethro wasn't sure exactly what he was looking for down in the Unctridge, but really, it didn't seem to matter much. Answers he knew must lie somewhere around here, though he didn't know what he's supposed to do to find them. In the meanwhile, there were monsters here, and he knew what to do about monsters. Those arrow rotators, though, were new and strange. What other secrets is the Empire hiding, he wondered. And what is this faintly charred smell in the air? Okay, more about monsters and fighting tactics. Sure, let's do that before we get on to one of my favorite new elements that was introduced in the City Beneath. Evil eyes. Attack when they see something threatening in their line of sight. A stab your sword finishes them off. Yeah, it's basically a roach. Uh, you can click on them and see what they see. When you wake it up, it is now a roach. Okay. Ah, these are all the same the same level. Okay, that's interesting. Didn't notice that before. Tactical hint. Eyes won't move if they never see you. Finish off these eyes by attacking them from their blind side. You may click on evil eyes or mouse to show their line of sight. You will wake if you ever step directly into it. That's true. I'm mean, we'll do that. Uh, we can also, I guess, just do it the way they told us to. Seep. Creatures that live in the walls. And why are they telling me about seep now? Is seep... Oh, there is seep in, in the next level. That's right. There is one room I remember now. They just come so late in Journey to Rooted Hold, I just remember them as a late-game enemy. But no. Uh, creatures that live in the walls. Strike them when they get close, or they will jump out and get you. Seep is really neat. I like seep. I wish more people would make rooms with seep. Uh, serpents. Their thick skin is invulnerable to your sword. Catching their head in a trap so they don't, they can't move is the way to get rid of them. Serpent tactics. Say in open spaces. Okay, yeah, that's just talking about serpent movement preferences. I'm not going to read that or get into that here. Because uh, that stuff is not super complicated, but it would take a while to go over and probably wouldn't mean a whole lot if I was just talking anyway. So we'll demonstrate Serpent Preferences as they become relevant. Red Serpents won't move over Force Arrows, so... Okay. Hint, stand behind the Serpent Gauge. Yeah, trivial. I guess this is why these rooms don't have... I don't have spores. Rock Golems. Strong but dumb creatures that will fall apart into an impassable pile of boulders when you hit your sword. Fantastic element. Super simple. Moves towards you. Uh, they get caught on things a little bit more than a roach does, which we'll be able to demonstrate shortly. But they do uh, leave um, obstacles which you know could hold down pressure plates or block 
enemy movement or be used as a barrier to protect your back from enemies. You know, lots of lots of cool things you can do with golems. Uh, bomb explosions will clear the blast area of rock golems. Serpents will also die if hit in the head with an explosion. Sure, just add more stuff about serpents there. Why not? Uh, rattlesnakes. Stab them in the tail to cut them down to size. Stay away from their heads to avoid being eaten. Sure. It can only be stabbed on the tail. Well, that sure was a lot of new enemies. Alright. And the hot tile. Creatures standing on one for more than a turn get burned. I guess I took the long way around. Oh. There we go. We might not be able to move all of them together because that horse arrow is going to cause issues. Uh, maybe not. So yeah, Roach moves on there, fine. If we move here, Roach will move off of the hot tile, just fine. But if it moves on it and can't move off for a turn, then it gets toasted. I really like hot tiles. They're an incredibly simple element that just has a ton of different uses. Alright, and here is our demonstration uh, on rock columns and how you can see when a roach tries to move towards me diagonally it slides along the wall, but the golem gets stuck. So yeah, if we put the golem up into the corner like this, it won't be able to get through. So the trick with this room, of course, is that if we kill the golem first on this hot tile, then it will leave a body there and the roaches will be unable to get onto the hot tile. So we have to get the roaches out first. And then yeah, ample time to see that the golem gets stuck on things. Hot tiles will damage a stationary rattlesnake's tail. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a very silly room. So you can click on pressure plates to see which door is highlighted. Now that we're in the 5.0 engine, you can also just click on the door to see which pressure plate is highlighted. This is just a matter of stand in the right spot. Snake gets toasted for a turn. Okay, we need to be up here. Uh, I didn't slow down by doing that, did I? I did. Okay. This is a trivial first place. Let's just get it. This one is there. Okay. And there. Okay, and here, I think we want our sword facing this way, maybe. I don't think we're clearing that room any faster than that. Nope. Uh, there's a secret here, though. So yeah, Heat Throw can also step on hot tiles. If you wait on a hot tile or try to turn your sword or something, you will also die. Same rule as the monsters. I guess this is sort of in tutorial mode, which is why I'm kind of tutorializing here, even though I'm assuming everybody watching this is a draw veteran. Alright, so this is an interesting idea for a room here. We have a roach that has to kill the serpent, and we have to drop all the tra trap doors. So 
So if we try to just go up here, we get stuck, but we can do this. Uh, this means that we can't rotate our sword anymore, by the way. Which is fine, it turns out. Well, it does mean with this diagonal that we can't actually get through here, which is kind of funny. Uh, that's not true, I could have just been smarter. Being smarter solves most of your problems in Drawd. Alright. There we go. That room was so hard the first time I got to it. But it turns out there's actually quite a bit of leeway if you're a draw veteran. Uh, which just goes to show how well designed the hold is, because that's something uh, I have a hold in progress, which I'm hoping to be in a testable state by the end of the month, uh, which is intended to be a beginner hold. And as somebody with thousands of hours of draw experience, trying to design easy puzzles is surprisingly hard. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting process. Okay, so here, having to get golems uh, stuck on each other. Which is pretty easy to do. Golems like getting stuck on things. Uh, let's just clear that up. Hmm. It's not really a way to... Oh, I guess we do it that way. Alright, then we're going to get you around this way. Actually, let's be a little bit more efficient about that and get you right in the corner. Uh, that was pointless because I needed a column specifically already killed there in order for this to work. Clear. Okay, not bad. Don't let the Slayer die. Ah, uh, an above grounder. You are my ticket to success. What? You're not a slayer, are you? So we need to maintain distance on the Slayer. Let's uh, get a little bit further away. Because if the Slayer... This isn't going to work. Hmm. That's really awkward. The slayer gets too close, he's going to try to turn us up. which will result in Slayer death. Okay, so that didn't work. Yeah, this room's really trivial if you just let the Slayer kill himself. Maybe I should have um, let that happen, because I'm pretty sure there's dialogue. Alright, so looking at this, what is going to be the hardest? Well, these four... I can deal with with my sword facing in this direction. So these two seem like the harder two. So starting with a north orientation, I should be able to get both of them. Ah, uh, that's the issue with this. Okay, well, if I go for you first, then... You're not a slayer, are you? Hmm. Problem with that strategy is that, uh, hmm. So you're the hard one, I think. Yeah, because if I go for this one first. Ah, uh, an above grounder. You are my ticket 
to success. What? You're not a slayer, are you? I mean, I can do that. And then this is the only orientation I should need. Uh, except for that roach that got itself stuck. That's also a problem. No, it's not going to work because I need to be facing down again. Okay, if I do that, I don't think I gain. Okay, so I can actually take advantage of the Slayer here to do a, a hook turn. I don't know if that was necessary, but I saw an opportunity, so I took it. Slayer on a hot tile roof. Oh, I got the well, achievement. I think I know who got the brains in that family. Wonder what he was talking about, though. And then might as well kill him now that we have the achievement. Okay, yeah. So as I recall, because um, the second game, Journey to Rooted Hold, you're being pursued by a Slayer the entire time, and the Slayer is supposed to be this unkillable, ominous uh, adversary character, like a, a rival to be throw in terms of sword slash hook skills and then they added a bunch of elements like the hot tiles that the slayer ai just doesn't know how to deal with so rooms like this are kind of a joke showing that turns out the unkillable slayer is actually not so unkillable after all when you start doing things that it wasn't uh programmed to deal with who would have who would have thought uh disarm token stepping on a disarm token takes away your sword until stepped on again so it's not just ormites all swordless trap doors won't fall from out from under you you automatically get your sword back when you leave the room. All right. So what is going on here? Uh, this room... There's weird lighting on these pressure plates, which is making a bunch of the room parse as orange to me when I click on the pressure plates, which is unfortunate would have liked this lighting to just not exist. That would make this room better. Yeah, like this. Why couldn't the pressure plates just be like that? All right, but yeah, so this is a room about trapping um, yeah, trapping these snakes. So this I guess the trick here is that I probably have to do this because there's a force arrow and you can't go against a force arrow because there are no rotation tokens in the in this level. You probably have to do that to start. Because we're not getting back to this. That's what I was looking for. So from here, you are now both short enough that I should be able to kill you uh, anywhere else. So that's just two. Uh, how, how big are you? You are six, you are five. Okay, so where is six? Is it this one? Over there. No. So we're here. Okay. So you're now both five. So this is this one, I believe. So now we have to be over there. Hey, tunnels. But we can't get there in time. Okay. Well, I guess we're just waiting. Step off of the tunnels. The snake can't get to us. Because 
tunnels. You can't move on tunnels unless B throws there. I guess I could have tried to get the next the next one, but I'm just kind of going to do them both like this, which is going to be slow. So this is the next one here. We need to be there. Uh, this is going to be pretty close, but fine. Uh, three is here, so we have to wait for it to go all the way around, and then we need to step on that. Okay. In the meantime, I guess we just wait here and do this. Can't get there in time. This is the one we want? Yeah. And two is going to be here, which is that one. Okay. Not a terribly interesting room. This is just a counting room. Yeah, this is a thing you can do with hot tiles. All right. And I guess the north part of the level. More level. All right. So this is where we get to start to see how evil eyes can be interesting. Because they can... Uh, see at a distance, which means you can do things like this, where you need certain uh, plates to be held. If you do this, we can get you there. Yeah, we can do that pretty easily. Uh, but then you just get off. Oh, we can put you there. It gets you. Don't have to worry about you anymore. Do we need this again? We do, because we don't need that again, though, ever, do we? Ah, uh, yes, we do. Okay. Well, we can get those two pretty easily. Hmm. That last one's going to be a little bit tricky. Well, let's just do that. We're mm. not so tricky after all. Okay. <laughs> now, evil eyes are an interesting enemy. Just their their long range properties make them have some things worth uh, worth making puzzles around. Safety disclaimer. All weapon-bearing officials must disarm before crossing the trapdoor to the west. The Anchorage administration bears no liability in the case of being trapped due to trapdoor droppage. Right. And this is a required room, so the blue door will not open uh, while we are in it, even if it is the last room on the level, which it won't be. Because there is that passage up this way, which presumably has a required room in it. So we have to do this disarmed. Which kind of makes sense. They're going to introduce Disarm and Hot Tile in the same uh, level. They're two elements that kind of go together. So the Serpent's probably the tricky part here. The Golems... Well, okay, I don't really have a choice. This is the first thing I do. We want to hit this. This is just backtracking. Okay, so we don't care. So we have two spots to kill Golems, here and here. We can open this. Opening this releases a serpent and then gets us killed. Unless we have a golem. So I guess we go up this way first. Mm, probably want to go one more than that. There we go, that's one down. And that brings you in here with me. You know, it would have actually been nice if we had had 
a little bit more spacing. So let's just give ourselves a little bit more spacing. And I guess we'll wait. Hmm. You're going to be on vertical? Yeah, so we have to wait here to get you to go up. That's fine. <laughs> Alright, so a little bit of a uh, little bit of serpent nonsense there at the end. Again, I don't particularly feel like explaining how that works. But serpents... Serpents are an enemy that'll feel random when you're new to Drawed, and once you've had way too much experience with them, they suddenly become very, very manipulable. Alright, so see. So the fun thing about this room is that we can't actually turn our sword once we get out to where the seed bar. Okay, this should let me get in here, and I think I have to go back. So maybe that wasn't the right orientation for that part. Okay. This should allow me to deal with both of the remaining batches of enemies. There we go. Um, just shuffle you in like that. Yeah, so the one seat room, I did remember this one just because it was somewhat memorable. Alright, we dropped the trap door, oh no. Progressing through an enactment. It is mine as it manifests for your unwilling eyes. That's great. Those at the library know a good deal about many things, great and small. But one bit of knowledge escapes them. Go to the library. Ask them about butterflies. What? Butterflies? I could ask them about something better. Like... What's this muffingness? Muffingness is soaked into their flesh. Of course, you can't just ask them what it is. This is some dumb joke of yours. You just want to see if I'll ask somebody about butterflies so you can have your big chortle. Do you ever feel the Empire living within you? Rules, rank, and purpose coursing through your blood? No. They do. That is the muffingness. Well, a negotiator, or 86 negotiator, I guess, doesn't uh, doesn't seem to feel the Malthamus as strongly as some of the others, then. Alright. So that was both the Uncturage and the Deep Uncturage. Never really got our answer as to what an Uncturage is, but at least we didn't find any uncles down here. He throws the only uncle in this place. And I think that was all challenges and secrets. I might have missed one. I guess we'll find out by the end. Or if somebody leaves a, a comment to that effect, I suppose I can go and deal with the room. Uh, earlier than at the end of the playthrough, but uh, I don't really mind doing it either way. Alright, we got some citizens here. Ooh, guess what I just overheard in the library? If you're talking about 6,835th Matador getting his tongue caught in a clockweight chain, I already know. Um, no, actually. I was referring to Guide 186 being murdered. Murdered? 
When? How? What happened? I'm not sure exactly, but it was probably her own fault. What makes you say that? She was obnoxious and always full of wishy-washy wisdom. So that means she deserved to die? Sounds stupid to me. Why kill? There's no reason for it. Oh, shut up. You sound just like that new kid at the DAA. <laughs> Who done it? All right, well, I have never seen that cutscene before. So that is why you kill the guide. Cool. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go to this checkpoint. Uh, because I didn't see a checkpoint outside the library, and that's where we will be headed next time to ask about butterflies. I will see you then.